Hello class, this is, I guess we could call this fractions number one. We are in the first week of January, coming back from a break and needing to brush up on some of our algebra skills. That the number one thing that people choke on in calculus is not calculus. Calculus has some hard mental hurdles in it, but I think five minutes explanation uh, can make it clear. What is much more difficult, and I think what a lot of you have forgotten, is the basic algebra skills of just how to move numbers around. So once there's some letters in it too. But I think we need to brush up on some fraction skills. So I've got three lessons on fraction-y kinds of things, and we will be going through that in three videos. You might not need this first video. This is pretty basic. So if you're doing well with fractions, you can skip this one. But for those of you who need a little bit of brush up, let's talk about something um, rather complicated. So that's specifically called a complex fraction. So for example, two over seven plus four over nine, uh-oh, uh, all over two over three plus one over 12. Now, I laid it out here, try to be very clear and to have northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast kind of quadrants to break it all up. But it could be more complicated than that. We could have fractions inside of fractions. We could have three parts instead of two. Things can get a lot worse. So I think most people have a sort of gut instinct to say, well, let's get a common denominator on the top and just deal with that, that their, their eye kind of says, all right, let's just deal with only those guys for a minute, and then we'll sort all that out, and then we'll come down here and we'll sort those guys out, and then maybe or maybe not they get stuck about what to do once they've come down to a fraction over a fraction. What I would suggest, and you don't have to do this, um, would be to get rid of as much fractioniness as possible right off the bat. So technique number one, I'm going to call um, clear the fraction. So clearing the fraction is something that can be done by multiplying top and bottom by the LCD. So if you've forgotten what lowest common denominator is, that's when you look at some fractions and you say, okay, I'm trying to add thirds and fourths they don't have anything in common, so I'm going to have to go to the first number that they do have in common. So if you were going by threes, um, you would maybe sort of see that it would progress like that versus if you were going by fours, that uh, it would progress like that. And they're not going to have anything in common until you get to 12. That, that, uh, that they don't have uh, three in common, they don't have four in common, they don't have six in common, they don't have eight in common, they don't have nine in common, but they do have 12 in common. So that might be a sort of mental picture to go with what is lowest common denominator. It's related to least common multiple. Let's take all of that now and come back to our particular example. If we were trying to add sevenths and ninths, we would need to be dealing in 60 thirds. If we were trying to deal in thirds and twelfths, then we could just deal in twelfths. Um, since we are dealing with sevens, with threes, with nines, and with twelves, then what is going to be our lowest common denominator? Well, I'm going to find that by saying seven, try that again, seven times nine uh, times four is going to be 252. So we are dealing with 250 seconds. So that means I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 252. What a terrible fraction this is. So let's try to clean that up. Now, if I am multiplying against the 7, then I'm going to divide 252 divided by 7 is 36, but I've got two of them. So the northwest corner has turned into 72. If I have 252 divided by 9, uh, that's 28, but times 4 is 112. So you can see already the benefit of this. We have cleaned up the numerator, no longer has fractions in it. 252 divided by 3 is 84, times 2 is 168, and 252 divided by 12 is 21. Okay. So, we have nearly cleaned everything up. 72 plus 112 
is 184 and 168 plus one, no, plus 21, 168 plus 21 is 189. So that is lowest terms for that. Yes, that's as good as that one gets. So you might say to yourself, okay, if I'm doing this with numbers, I'm just going to go to the calculator. I don't want to have to deal with all of these 250 seconds and finding lowest common denominators. But the reason I do that with numbers first is because it can all get worse with variables. So let's look at a hard one like that. We might have v plus 1 over 9 plus 4 over u minus 4 all over u minus 4 over 16 minus 3 over 4. Now again, trying to figure out what the lowest common denominator is can be very, very tricky. But we have to remember, there's nothing in common between u minus 4 and uh, 4 and uh, 9 that the 4 and the 16 have something in common, but our LCD is going to be u minus 4. We need to get um, both 3's in there. We need to get the 9 in there. And we need to get both 4's in there. So 3 times 3 is 9 times 16 is uh, 124. So, or 144, I mean. So 144 u minus 4 is our LCD. So let's go ahead and multiply top and bottom by that. And that's going to get rid of the fractions, which is why we're doing it. Okay, so uh, 144 divided by 9 is 16. So we're going to have 16 times v plus 1 times u minus 4 uh, plus uh, u minus 4s are going to cancel. So we're going to have 144 times uh, 4 is 576. And then the 16 goes into 144 nine times. So we've got 9 times u minus 4 squared. And then 144 divided by 4 uh, times 3 is uh, 108. So plus 108 u minus 4. So uh, I think we are going to get some numbers on top that are going to cancel and some numbers on bottom that are going to cancel. So we have to keep going and try to clean all this up. That's going to be 16 times this foil. And I'm going to go ahead and just foil it first. Firsts, uh, outers, inners, lasts, plus 576, all over 9 times u squared minus 8u plus 16 plus 108u, and then 108 times 4 is 432. Okay, so I left myself a little bit of room because I know that the only thing that's going to interact here are the plain numbers. So there's some plain numbers that are going to interact and cancel a little bit there. Ah, but down here, I'm going to get some u's that are going to interact and some numbers that are going to interact. So I need to get this all distributed here. Okay, so a little note to self. Zoom way in here. 16 uv... Uh, 16 times 4 is 64. 64 v plus 16 u minus 64 plus 576. And 9 u squared minus 72 u. 16 times 9 is our old friend 144 plus 108 u plus 432. Okay, so let's get some like terms together. I've only got... That is my only uv, that is my only v, that is my only u, but then 576 minus uh, 64 is 512. I think those all divide by 16. And then here there's only this u squared, but then 108u minus 72u is 36. And then the numbers, 432, um, oh, plus, wow, this is going to get big, 144 is 576. All right.
So I look at that numerator and I see that everybody is even. I look at that denominator and I say everybody is perhaps a multiple of nine. Let's check, 576 divided by nine does go evenly, wow. Okay, so I can take out a 16 from the top and a nine from the bottom. This is getting interesting. UV minus 4V plus 4U and 512 divided by 16 is 32 uh, plus 32. And then uh, over here, what did I get? I had U squared minus 4U. And what did I say? 576 divided by 9 is 64. All right. So does that factor? We've got what multiplies to 64 and adds to negative 4. I don't think anything does that. And what I hope you can see is the, the difficulty involved here with fractions really needs, you have to keep on your toes. My way of multiplying by the LCD is not the only way that works. You can totally solve the top and then the bottom and then flip it over. But as you, you can do that if you remember the basic principles of fractions, that, that what is going on with fractions. Fractions are the reciprocals of multiplication. That when you say, what is um, a three divided by a third, you should not get confused. That's the same as three times three. That's just nine. So if you're trying to think about the picture that goes with this, you've got something that's three units long, and you're trying to say, well, how many thirds can go into that? Well, obviously, there are going to be nine thirds that go into three. So dividing is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So if you have A over B all over C over D, that's the same as A over B times D over C, AKA AD over BC. So try to keep it straight. Don't fall for a lot of common traps that people get into. There's, it, it should be pretty obvious what A over B over C that you're going to multiply by 1 over C and you're going to get A over B, C. Or if you have uh, A all over B, C, that that's going to be, you flip over the C, B and you get A, C over B. So try to avoid these common pitfalls and we'll do more fractions tomorrow.